David Ye Gonzalez. Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast, my man. How are you doing? Hey, good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, brother. So this is the first the first client I've had on the podcast. So um, that's pretty awesome. And I'm excited to talk with you. Um, and quick thing about David, uh, I, I probably, I don't know if I would have an Elevate Everyday Podcast if it wasn't for David, because you, you really pushed me. You were like, um, you're like, you should start a podcast. Uh, and it, it wasn't only like a one-time thing. It was like, then, then a couple, I was like, yeah, I should. And then a couple months went by and you're like, why haven't you started the podcast <laughs> and stuff like that? So it's, <laughs> it's cool that the, the roles were reversed on that. My, you know, you being my client, um, you know, pushed me to get this started and everything. So appreciate you for that. Well, you're welcome. Of course, for some of, um, the listeners that maybe are not clients, um, Cade um, has uh, community sessions basically every Wednesday in which we talk about different topics and stuff. And so Cade usually does a presentation about the topic of the day. It might be, uh, I don't know, something related to food, something related to exercise, something related to productivity. And so every time that we had those talks, I was like, you know that you can put this in a podcast <laughs> also because I listen to podcasts while I'm working out. Right. So it would be kind of cool to listen to your trainer uh, while you're you're doing the exercises. That, yeah. You know. For sure. That he's sending you. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to wanted to thank you for that and point that out because, yeah, I, I literally don't know if there would be a podcast without you pushing me <laughs> on that stuff. But that would um, be nagging. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so. And then, you know, just to say a little bit more about David, he's a, he works at MIT. Um, he's a lecturer at MIT. Um, another cool thing, you know, and I think this might be part of why you've been successful with me is, you know, you, you go back and forth between Spain and here, like, you know, kind of regularly. And I feel like it's almost like little diet breaks built in when you go to Spain and stuff like that. Maybe we could talk about that in a little bit, but um, just wanted to start with like, you know, what were you doing before we started working with each other? I had a break of trainers for, I would say, more than six months. So before we started, this is a long journey. Um, before we started, um, I was at Texas A&M for five years. And what, right before going to Texas, uh, I was lucky enough to go to do summer school in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. And... Uh, while I was there, I was like, why don't I get a trainer while I'm here? Because it was so cheap. Um, so I got a trainer in, in Argentina and that kicked me off to, you know, I really like having a trainer and having someone that is, you know, on top of me while I do exercises. Right. Um, so while I was at Texas A&M doing my grad studies, um, I had trainers throughout the five years. Some of them I like more, some of them I like less. Um, even though I have to say that most of them I really liked. Um, maybe there was one at the beginning that I didn't click with. Hmm. Um, but so with the pandemic and transferring to Boston, I had a few months in which I did nothing. And I did nothing but eat, basically. Okay. Um, and when I'm alone with food... That's a problem. So gotcha. I, it was, it escalated. <laughs> um, so that Christmas came and I was like, you know, either I get a coach here um, and, you know, figure out maybe online, maybe not, but that has a diet side, a diet component to it. Mm -hmm. Or I jo join a CrossFit gym. I think we talked about this on on our first conversation. Yeah. Um. So I saw Cade, I believe on Instagram probably because of all the Texas A and M connections. Yeah. And we started a conversation, and here we are, two and a half years later. Nice. Yeah. And so with with where you were at, like you know that initial conversation, just kind of, you know, for the listeners, and just to kind of jog my memory, honestly, too, like what what were you weighing and kind of like, where were you at, you know, physically at that point? So I was the heaviest I've ever been. Oh. It was 
I was at a hundred kilos for sure, which that is a lot in pounds. Um, I'm six feet and I think that I, I was like 250, I guess that's a hundred kilos. Okay. I gotcha. don't know. I, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And that was the heaviest and most out of shape that I've ever been. Um, okay. Because and... I'm usually, you know, in the 80 kilo, uh, more or less margins. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, and there was, I mean, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of different things with my, my work and everything. So right. I know why we got there, but yeah, yeah that's, that was the time that we needed to fix it. For sure. And, and you weren't working out like at all at that, at that time or. I think I ran because, ran. um, I tried to run, um, I run like maybe a couple of days, but okay. the pro like a couple of days in the whole entire semester. Yeah. Um, because you know, I was coming from Texas to Boston, Boston, as we know, it is cold. Um, right. and I discovered that I had like a try, uh, a running path right next to my house, but nevertheless, I didn't use it. Like, I, I think that I ran in three, four months, like two, three times. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so fast track to now, like, what do you, what do you weigh in now? And kind of like, what's, what's changed since then? And that's kind of a loaded well, I question. <laughs> I weigh, I believe 12 kilos less. So okay. that's something that's around 24 pounds, I guess. And nice. we're pretty consistent in that, in the eighties margin. Yeah. a little bit more right now but we're working on going down yeah um so yeah that's that's where we are um i think that well you can attest to this i think that in at the gym probably i'm the the healthiest i've ever been and close to the um, the most that i've lifted i believe that at some point in texas um there was a trainer uh and he was really into doing deadlifts, squats, and bench presses. Okay. And so that's what we did, basically. Wow. And I think that with him, uh, we got close to more uh, reps than more weight that we're doing right now. But also, I cannot do a one rep max because I'm alone in the gym. So <laughs> it would right. be, I'm, I'm afraid to, to put more weight just in case yeah. I collapse. Uh, right. And all everyone around me is like not caring or not listening. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah uh, so I think that I'm the fittest I've ever been right now. Awesome. Sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, you said you've lost like 24, 25 pounds. Um, but I think we can both agree, like, and this is why I always push you guys to, to take the progress pictures, but you know, I don't think the, the scale is telling the whole story for you even, no. right. Because, you know, like you said, you've gained, gained strength, you've gained muscle, you know, I, I can just tell you, you look completely different if we compare from when you very first started to where you're at now. Um, so yeah, yeah. so I, I think there's, there's other stuff, you know, the body composition is for sure changing as well. Um. And I mean, with going back to the scale, uh, I don't know if you remember, but last year I was, I was having problems with my scale. I didn't know what was going on. Every time that I got in, in the same morning, it gave yeah. me five different, like completely and widely weird <laughs> way. Yeah. So I bought a new scale and that scale told us that I was like 10 kilos beyond what the other one was telling us. Right. Uh, which was a sucker punch yeah um but we were able to control it and go down even yeah. then i i lost from that point like seven kilos and that was right. in february so, yeah 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 so moral of that story guys like make sure you have a good scale because <laughs> when, when you're tracking your measurements you want to make sure that you're you got accurate you know results that you're that you're measuring and everything because that can skew everything off and stuff so yeah um, but for sure so what you know besides besides maybe you know obviously the 24 25 pounds um and and obviously your body composition is changing and you're gaining strength like what other results have you seen kind of since working with me i think that i've been more consistent with my habits i yeah. think that 
um, now going to the gym is not is not a choice anymore, <laughs> which sounds weird. But uh, the good thing is that I have a gym in my job. So yep. once I get to my job, like the first thing that I do right now, because that's the schedule that I have, every year is different. Um, I just leave my bags, maybe answer a couple of emails and head to the gym. Mm. And that is just part of the routine, part of like the same way that I would be like from 10 to 11, I teach a class. It would is the same thing with going to the gym at 920, more or less, I'm entering the gym. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that is the most, the, the biggest thing that has changed. Nice. Yeah, I, I wanted to point out too, because I noticed you went on like a little productivity kick kind of before your semester started and stuff like that. You're looking into, you know, I think you even did a, like a course, like a productivity course and stuff like yeah. that. So I, I just find it interesting. I, a lot of times I see an evolution in some of my clients where, you know, it starts out with kind of like fixing your, your physical habits, but a lot of times there's some carry over there into like other aspects of your life. Um, so I wasn't sure if you, you know, had anything else that you've noticed that on that side of things or anything to touch on with that. I think, I think that I've always been interested in productivity. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, have, I, I have two PhDs, uh, so yeah. there's <laughs> a big type A uh, <laughs> control freak here uh, <laughs> and, and really interested in productivity. Uh, but the problem is that every time that I was interested in it, something else came about. Hmm. Uh, so I wasn't able to to fully complete it. Gotcha. Like I have Atomic Habits downloaded in my Audible, but every time that I try to to get into it, there's something else that pops by. And so I need to stop that project and go into the next. Right. And I think that going to the gym has been one of the most consistent since we started working actually yeah. has been one of the most consistent habits. Yeah. Um, I think also another habit that I was going to say that has been pretty consistent is having eggs for breakfast, mm. which for me is countercultural because for okay. me, eggs are a dinner thing. Really? Uh, because in Spain, you don't have eggs for breakfast <laughs> at all. Really? You have it for dinner. You you have it in any other meal but breakfast. Okay. So, so that has been uh, an interesting change as well. Like that's been part of the routine as well. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that one. Okay. Um. <laughs> any, so yeah. So obviously you've changed some habits. You know you've you've changed your body. You you've changed kind of just you know what you do on the on the daily basis. Honestly. So can you think of any like maybe limiting beliefs that you had before we kind of like made all these changes that might've been holding you back, um, that you were able to, to get rid of, um, during this process. Huh? I think maybe because I'm, I'm still working through this. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the limiting beliefs that we can talk about when getting a coach and getting to you know a uh, uh, healthy life lifestyle thing there are two things actually one is that you need to stick to it 24 7 and you cannot give yourself a little bit of grace and that i think that we talked about this in one of your calls um that one terrible meal or one che cheat meal just basically says well you know, I cheated for lunch, so I might as well cheat for dinner and mm -hmm. that will carry over for breakfast and and that spiral. I think mm -hmm. that that is something that we have talked and you have said many times, like one cheat meal is not, does not constitute like uh, just everything's going to the trash. It's right. just one cheat meal. It's actually good mentally and, and every other aspect and socially as well. Because right. for me, those cheat meals that I have are usually with friends. Yeah. Because if I'm going out with my friends, I'm not going to be like, no, I just can't have this and that. Well, you know, I, I, I'm there with my friends. I'm there to have a good time. Right. <laughs> I might not order the biggest pasta bowl that we can see, but nevertheless. Mm -hmm. And I think that the other limiting belief is that 
you hire a trainer just to lose weight or to um, gain confidence in the gym. I think those two are great. Mm -hmm. But for me, we have set goals that are outside of that realm. Yeah. I mean, a little yeah. bit because right. uh, I, I have tried to run a half marathon, which went array because I broke a toe yeah. like two <laughs> weeks before the half marathon. Yeah. Um, but those sorts of goals that are outside of what we do <clears throat> are also important. I restarted and rejoined uh, my yoga practice, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that I really enjoy. And it's really something that I, that I didn't know that I missed. Uh, but every Sunday that I go, it's, it's a little bit better and it's a little bit, yeah, a better time. Yeah. So, yeah. Those goals that are outside of the gym are something that is a little bit limiting in what we consider when uh, hiring a, a coach and hiring a trainer. And I think that those two for me are byproducts of what we do in the gym. Nice. Yeah. So I think to, to touch on what you said the in the beginning of those two answers, um, yeah, it's like, I think a lot of people think that you know, you, you come into to training um, and, it, and it's just like, all right, like you, you have one cheat meal and it's like sometimes people, I, I call it like the all screw it moment or like you have a coach and it's like, well, I fell off plan, right? Like I'm, it's, they think of it like very binary. It's like, I'm either on plan or I'm off, right? And, and then I, I find that a lot of people when they're so binary like that, when they do maybe go off plan a little bit, um, they have the all screw it moment and they're like, okay, well, I might as well just, you know, the whole day's ruined, you know, I'm, I'm off plan. Like I, I failed and stuff like that. And, and like you said, you know, a lot of times having those cheat meals built in and like having it fit your lifestyle and kind of building the program around, you know, doing social things with friends and stuff like that, it's going to allow you to stick to it for the long term, Right. So, so yeah. I, I think it's a huge point. And I, I think that's why I touched on that. You go to Spain, you know, I think a couple times a year, um, and it's almost yeah. like our, our built in like diet break. Right. And, and, you know, there's, there's ways we can kind of structure programs around your lifestyle and actually help it like, or it's, like benefit you. Right. It's, it's just a, it's a mindset shift and it's making sure that you've got the right kind of coach to, to make sure that we can still structure things and keep you online with reaching your goals, uh, but make sure that it, it fits your lifestyle. So I, I like that point that you made David. And then yeah, so that that second point is yeah, it's like we want to make sure that you know we're we're improving your life overall. That's that's how I feel as a coach. You know, I think it's really cool. You know, I get to pretty much like become friends with you guys and like you know really get to know you guys over time and everything. Especially all that are on the call, like the group calls every week. Like we really kind of build a little community and like really get to know each other. So yeah, it's like why not try to just level up in all areas, like why just be so pigeonholed, you know, if that that's how I feel as a coach. And so I'm glad that you said that. Cause that's something I'm trying to create just through the program of like, let's, let's make sure that we're talking about everything that's going on. And, you know, you, you like got a full-time position at MIT during the process and stuff. It's like, I want to, I want the best for you guys. And yeah, that's, that's awesome to hear. And I appreciate that. I think that something that we, that we haven't touched upon when, when talking about, getting a trainer and i think why we have worked and why i have stuck around uh with kate as a trainer i think that you know maybe for people that are listening to this it might not be kate it might be john or peter or mary um but i think that something important that i didn't have with the other trainers was um accountability mm -hmm. i think that uh, in in my relationship with Cade, he checks on me three times a week, mm -hmm. uh, and he, you know, and the same way that he uh, checks on me, I send him things and I send him, you know, my weight and stuff like that. But we are very consistent in communication, right? Um, and it's something that, you know, of course, when I was in Texas A and M, uh, the trainers were undergrads in in physiology and they were doing 
you know, they were trainers, but they were undergrads. Right. They couldn't be on top of me. They they shouldn't <laughs> be on top of me because they had yeah. their own stuff on. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that is something that is different from from that to uh to Cade. Yeah. And I and think that, that that made a huge difference awesome. uh, in, in keeping up mentally as well. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And yeah, and and not to hate on those undergrads because I was one of those at one point. I was I was a trainer <laughs> at, at Texas. Yeah. And, but yeah, it's like that, that's like beginning of your career type stuff. Um, you know, that's you know, everyone's got to get started somewhere and everything. But just yeah, across time I've noticed like, you know, it's way more about everything that's going on outside of the gym sometimes than it is what's going on yeah. inside the gym. So that's you know, just as I've worked with more and more people that's something i've realized and it's something i've really strived for is like let's look at the holistic approach you know i want to know everything that's going on you know like you know david you know i even track like make sure that, you know sleep is good like i'm getting touch points on that that even the stress like i want to know what's going on outside of the gym that may be affecting things right so and you know there's been times where getting that type of feedback from you that's helped me help you as a coach right and yeah. so so yeah, I appreciate that. That's awesome. That's a good point. I'm glad that I'm glad that no, you have that feedback. Going back to, to not hating the undergrads, um, <laughs> they were great. I mean, yeah. again, I had better and worse relationships with with them, uh, but they were amazing at what they were doing for, for sure. being undergrad. Yeah, and their job not wasn't what we're doing. Right. Their job was being there for X amount of hours uh, and being there supervising the the exercises that, that we did. I mean, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, so I finally got a fancy water bottle that I can record myself at the gym, right. which was something that Kate was was telling me that he needed videos of me doing different things. Yeah. And I believe it was deadlifts. Uh, you had no notes. And I think that that is because of some of the trainers that I had in, in Texas A&M, because we were doing deadlifts yeah, nonstop. Yeah, uh, to really focus on the form. Right. And when going back, it's pretty easy to 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 imagine. I believe his name was Corbin. You know, telling me that it's like someone is pulling on your underwear, <laughs> and that way, you know, you have to stick it out. So yeah, <laughs> that's a hey, that's a good cue. No, I actually, I actually it, like that cue. That's <laughs> they work. <laughs> it worked for me because he was saying all these things. I didn't know what the hell he was saying yeah. until he meant he said that and that yeah. clicked. Nice. Um, we're still working on squats. That's not. I mean, that has been always my problem. Okay. But with other elements, uh, I think that those trainers, even though they were, quote unquote, basic, yeah. we really focus on form. Right. On some of the stuff. That yeah. has carried over because body memory and muscle memory. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, and I, I think just to kind of touch on the difference between, you know, in-person and online, obviously we're we're fully remote and everything. Um, you know, I've, I've found there, there are some pros and cons, but, you know, for the most part, I feel like this system works for, for the average person better um, just because, like we talked about before, it's like, you know, there's, there's more touch points, you know, you get the guidance you need as far as on the workout side, we get the meal plan included, which, you know, I don't, that's not a part usually of in-person personal training and everything. So, yeah. yeah, so there's pros and cons. And, you know, sometimes I do wish I could be there with you guys, giving you cues like that, pulling on the underwear <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, but, but yeah, that's why I do encourage, and I'm, I'm really happy that we, we finally are getting some videos from you and we're honing in on some of those things, yeah. um, for sure. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it was a stupid water bottle from Amazon. <laughs> that was thirty yeah. bucks. I mean, I could show it. I have it here. I ha I actually bought two because I think that it's pretty nice. stylish, and it has like that that puts into your iPhone. So, nice. And I believe that it has like a MagSafe also for Android. So okay, cool. So, yeah, it was really a simple change, but. That way I don't have to bother or create a this like a tripod out of right. rolling pins and stuff. That's yeah. a little bit cumbersome when you're in a gym. So. Right. For sure. Yeah. Well, cool, man. And then um so I want wanted to ask you this just for, for the listeners, whoever's listening to this, maybe if they're not 
clients of mine, which a lot of, a lot of our listeners are clients, but you know, what advice would you give someone if they're going into a fitness journey this year and like really wanting to transform their fitness this, this year, what, what advice would you give? I think not not giving up. I think that we have, we have talked about this because it's always like when we go to the gym in January and it's just packed, packed with, with people. And then by the beginning of February, it starts dwindling. Yeah. And, and it's being great again because nobody's there. So we can, we can do what we want to do. Yeah. Um, I think that that is the, the piece of advice that I would give is like the same that we have talked about the cheat meals and, you know, screw it. Right. Um, it's the same thing, you know, yeah. one bad meal is not going to throw away the whole work that you did. Right. The same with working out. If you don't go on Monday, that's not going to throw away the rest of the week. Exactly. I believe that last week I couldn't, I couldn't go to the gym on Thursday. So I told you, and we worked around it and we figured out, you know, uh, at home workout. Right. Um, so there are ways to, to figure it out. Yeah. And that's what I would say not to, to give up and just keep at it. I mean, I'm also stubborn, so that doesn't help. (laughs) No, that, that does help. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I think. So that's. What, yeah, I like that. I like both of those. Okay. Those points for sure. And I, what I posted in our WhatsApp group yesterday, I don't know if you read it with the the goal gradient theory in there, but we we kind of talked about it when we did that coaching call recently on like the middle. And I think what you're saying, you know, is is a pretty big testament to this where, yeah, people are excited kind of the beginning of the year, like when they first start goals, you know, they're pumped up, it's easy to be motivated. Um, but like motivation during your fitness journey, or like if you have a specific goal, it's kind of like a U. Yeah. So if you look at it on like an, in an X and Y axis, it's kind of like a U, right? It's like you start yeah. out with high motivation when you first get started in the middle of your journey or like when you're, you're in the middle of reaching your goals, your motivation's at the lowest, right? Cause it's, it's like you, you lost the motivation from the beginning and, and like the end goal is still kind of far away. So a lot of people like, you know, that that's where a lot of people fall off is like in that middle or just like when they, when they see that first stall out or that first plateau, that's when a lot of people, um, you know, have that all screw it moment, like we talked about. Um, and then a lot of times once people get closer to their goals, that it's easier to be motivated. Like the closer you get, it's easier to be motivated, but, but it's that middle part where you want to make sure that you're aware of this. You know, that this is just something as humans, it's kind of natural um, to lose that motivation. So I think some of the things you're saying, David, like, you know, having someone to to communicate with when there's times like that, where you can't make it to the gym and we still work around it. Um, you know, just, just trying to create that, that accountability, whether it's with a coach or just finding a group or something like, you know, just have some accountability um, and, and just be aware that there's going to be times where you're going to lose some motivation. There's going to be times where you do plateau or stall out. That's just part of the process, but just pushing through it, not letting yourself have those all screw it moments and just sticking with it. So I appreciate that, David. That's, that was awesome. I think that <clears throat> when talking about this, um, the last couple of years for me, I have had a period of plateauing in yeah. my weight. And it's been really frustrating. And I think that we have talked through it because, you know, I'm doing everything right. I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing where we're going and it's a little bit being lost in the woods and the scale is not always 100%. It's not telling you the truth 100%. Right. And I don't know what's with my body more or less in the months of February or March. They, my body just likes to keep the weight um i guess and and we have talked through it and we have figured it out and then by the end i do reach my goals i think that yep. um for me and it's something that uh has come up like every january february uh we fitness junkies uh do a challenge mm-hmm. and 
well, the first year it was great. Like the first year I started with challenge, I believe that I was a challenge client, yeah. uh, not challenged, but challenge <laughs> client. Um, and for me, the first year was great doing a challenge. It was, you know, the right motivation. But last year and this year, I'm in the challenge, mm -hmm. but we have talked about it. Like that's not my main motivator or my right. main goal. My main yeah. goal is either uh, losing weight, gaining fitness, um, and my deadline is not three months, it's four right. months, it's five months, it's until I go to Spain, which is something as we have talked about, yeah. um, really good because that's my diet break. Right. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. find some motivation, but don't be that motivation, uh, your whole entire goal or right. your whole entire life. Yeah. It's like, there's going to be challenges that can kickstart things, or maybe you've got like a specific goal for the beginning of the year, but like, like David said, that's not the end all be all. I, I used to have, you know, early on in my fitness journey, you know, I'd set a certain goal. Like I'd be like, all right, I'm doing this deadlift competition or like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get this lean. And I was like, all right, this, it felt like the end all be all. And then every time I would reach those goals, it was like, well, nothing really changed. Like <laughs> I just reached that. Now it's just time to set another goal. Right. So it's, it's not the end all be all like David's saying, like, this is an infinite game. Like this is a lifelong journey. Right. And so I'm, I'm glad you're realizing that. And a lot of people do get started in that, like maybe something sparks it, they do a challenge, stuff like that. Um, and that, that's like a good source of motivation for a while. But if you're wanting to do this for the long term, yeah, you've got to constantly goal set, constantly push yourself, constantly challenge yourself and keep striving for more, even, even when the progress does slow down. Because the fact of the matter, you know, for someone like me, even someone like you, David, now where you've been doing it for a while and you've, you've reached significant goals and you've, you know, you've become a little bit more advanced in your fitness journey it becomes that much harder actually to continue to make progress because you've made so much progress. Right. But yeah, I think, I think that's partly when some people fall off too, is they're like, well, what's the point now? I've kind of like reached my pinnacle, but no, it's like keep striving for more because the, the progress, no matter how small, right. Is that's, that's what keeps you going. Like right? that, that actually keeps you motivated to keep challenging yourself. Cause when you lose that challenge, if, if you lose that goal setting and you kind of just become complacent, that can cause you to fall off. Um, so I'm glad that even though, you know, sometimes it's been tough for us, David, and we've had to kind of like work through some things. If we've plateaued, you know, we, we keep striving for more and we keep goal setting, keep, keep trying to challenge you. So. Yeah. And I think that, that, I mean, that has kept me sane at <laughs> many moments because yep. we, I mean, in the last couple of years, there's been big, big dumps, uh, thrown at me, like, right life wise yeah um trying to find a job uh job searching was hard um other life things and we have been able to work through that um right. and i that it is also giving you as as i started saying it's giving you a little bit of grace like you know you maybe you cannot do this but you can do this other thing or right figuring out a way to to make it work yeah. To make it work for you and not you working for it. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So kind of, yeah, I yeah, think kinda. that for example, going back to the, to the stupid example, what happened in, in October, I broke my toe, like really broke it. Uh, like it was, it was painful. <laughs> uh, and this was a couple of weeks before the marathon the half marathon that I was going to run and I was really looking forward to it. And it sucked because we have been training for it. Yeah. Um, but then you set another goal, which was the 10 K that I had December 31st that I always run. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, now that the weather, hopefully here in Massachusetts, it doesn't want to cooperate. Uh, but the moment that, you know, that the weather starts getting better, I'll go back to running and that half marathon in, in November, we're signing up for that. So, yeah. you know, you just have to work through it and work past it. Yeah, for sure, man. So, yeah. So, so we've got that goal. What, what other goals, like what's, what's next for you? Like what, what do you, you know, and the, by the end of the year, we'll say like what, and I know we, we've talked about it, but just, just for, you know, to kind of reiterate things and just, you know, like I said, I'm always trying to get you guys to, to tell me your goals, but just, you know, what are, what are we striving for here by the end of the year? I think that, 
Yeah, I think that for, so just as we have been saying, more or less mid-May, I'm going to back to Spain and that will be my diet break, not my fitness break, because right. I keep on going to the gym and running, etc. cetera. Um, so for May, I want to lose a bunch of weight and, and we'll see where we land and restart running. I think that by the end of the year, I want to run that half marathon that I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I want to explore because that's that's another fun thing when you're in this. You you learn things and you want to explore them. Yeah. I want to explore uh, getting a, a, a fat measuring and body composition. There you go. Yeah. Scan, see where we are, and actually do it like in in August when I come back, and then in December. And see where that how that compares. Yeah, and working through through all that, working through some of the some of the the things, adjusting some of the things that might be more challenging for me. So yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. So we'll hit that half marathon comeback season. We'll we'll make sure we get that. Um. Yeah. And like we talked about before, for sure, want to like nail down an accurate body fat measurement for you because then we could really see where we can improve as far because we'll see your muscle yeah. mass we'll see your body fat mass well you know it'll be clear as day um and so that will tell a lot more of the story even if the scale you know if we don't see the scale moving a whole lot because once once we hit your weight goals yeah i would say that's that's like more of what we want to focus on as far as measurements and metrics is the body composition right so super excited for that awesome yeah i think i think that would be fun to yeah. explore and see for sure it's not right now it's it's more about having fun and getting healthy habits right more than i mean the scale is still a battle but it's <laughs> still a, a pain uh <laughs> but uh it's the the other things that also yeah. we're, we're working with the scale we're trying to f have a like a friendly relationship yeah she's not cooperating but we're trying <laughs> uh so yeah i think that finding out all those different measurements will be a, a new experience and something to to figure out and something to challenge myself and um mm -hmm. i think it's always good to to find little challenges little things that you know make it worth your while yeah as we said like most of the people listen to music while while at the gym and then listen to podcasts while running and for me, it's the opposite. Like, I cannot listen to podcasts while I'm running. But while I'm at the gym, I like to learn stuff. So yes. I'm learning stuff while I'm, you know, pushing weights. Yeah. So that's, it's finding new ways of learning and challenging yourself and incorporating things that you like. Awesome. Sweet, brother. Well, I appreciate you, David. Um, yeah, this, so this was the, the first client podcast. So really appreciate it. Had a, had a good convo. This was fun. Um, yeah. So guys, I hope you, you know, I know you got some value out of this. Um, you know, take some of that advice that David was giving you, um, put this into practice right away into your life. Right. Cause on the elevate everyday podcast, like I say, every single time, it's not just about listening, you know, take this, this new knowledge, this, um, and what you're listening to and put it into practice, right? Like put this in your life right away. And, uh, yeah. So guys make sure to subscribe like and subscribe let's get to 2k and beyond um and uh make sure to stay tuned every week and i'll see you guys in the next video but in the meantime elevate every damn day thank you guys and thank you david peace Where's elevate only obligation is to tell it straight